ghost tank will keep you in the know in the big ghost tank will In the big ghost tank will keep you in the know in the big ghost tank will fix your techie woes and we'll break things and we'll make things till we're all together raking and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big ghost tank in the big ghost tank come and join our fire crew in the big ghost tank Ahoy and welcome to Hello. episode 123 of the Bilge Tank in Thermovision. That's kind of weird. That is kind of weird. Is that your lollipop? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the angle of the camera on the desk and the angle of the camera up there are just a little bit different. So ah, it's kind that, of that is hot. Too. They're set up to match us at this distance, aren't they? Uh, eclipsing your hot tea with like can we like can we destroy his hot tea with that? <laughs> Very, very cool. Oh, my vision is cool. Mm -hmm. You can see the uh, pixel alien thing if you do that. Like you this is the insulated frame stuff, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. What is it though? What is what? The thermal camera. Oh, I don't know. Very good question. Let's have a look. Is it, is it a new product? It is a new product, Sam. You're absolutely right. Uh, I think Phil might have it up on the stairs. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> made a mess of that. That is um, badly yeah. wrong. This will do. So yeah, just today we've just launched yeah. two new uh, breakout boards, so nice. uh, and they are both based on the MLX90640 <laughs> thermal camera. <laughs> uh, but it comes with two different lens options. So you've got like a wide angle lens, oh, 110 yeah. degrees, and you've got a narrow yeah. field oh, version, which is 55. Is that the narrow field that's version? That's the narrow field. That's the narrow one. one. No, no. No, that's the wide one. Short, short one to wide angle. Oh. That's the wide one. Sorry, that is the long one is standard. Yeah, where's my um, long one gone then? I have a long one. You got one there? It's just there. Maybe Sandy can put it. Yeah, it's quite long as well. Not really quite long. You should probably drive with those on the closer. Yep. Oh. Let's take a look. Yeah. Oh, we oh go. we've just totally broken all the cameras today. It's legendary. Oh, we haven't even turned the up camera on. Yeah. It's going very well. It's very, very warm. I'll provide an elaborate today. frame around oh. it in order to. Uh, 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 I don't think uh, the power's actually plugged in. Is there... Uh, is there uh, no, it's not plugged in. Sorry. That's because it's too high up. <laughs> My word. So the USB cable <laughs> is just... Oh, dear. It's been a busy day. Switch back to thermal vision. Yeah, it's it's about thermal vision. Just more like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you've got a hip hop key for it. How do you even put a hip key on the thing? Sweet. Thermal vision, Sunday fading. So this is actually uh, code running in C that grabs frames from the camera and uh, does a bit of false colouring on them. This is a really crude false colouring algorithm which just has a set of individual colours ranging from uh, blue for stuff that's really cold, mm -hmm. ooh, or black, and then blue for stuff that's really cold. And then it goes up through green, yellow, red, and then purple, and then white for stuff that's super hot. <laughs> and it just kind of gets the temperature as a position in that array of colours and then blends the two adjacent colours together to form your uh, false colour for that temperature. That's quite a crude algorithm, but it works pretty damn well. Okay, let's see, we're, see we're in tea, yeah. I'm just trying to not press the button that's going to make things go horribly mm -hmm. wrong. There we go. <laughs> and this is the narrow angle lens, a shorter, kind of mm -hmm. longer. Yeah, standard. Sweet. 55 degree field to view. Yep. That's, yeah. right. and that's the kind of thing you put in like a little handgun thermal imaging sensor. As you can see, the wide angle is kind of wide enough to capture all of us sitting here, and it's only, what is it, three feet away from us? Yeah, about right? three feet away. Works well. It's nice. And you'd put uh, headers on those as well. Yep. Like Just um, yeah, they come bundled with a right angle five by one female header and a standard five by one male, male header. header. Yeah. yeah, the female so right angle can... header, so you can plug it straight into a Raspberry Pi. Yep. So basically, the pin yeah. layout is compatible with the uh, top end of the Raspberry Pi's GPIO. So, with the kind of header Sam's got there, <clears> you can plug it straight into a Raspberry Pi, no extra cables needed, no messing around. Super straightforward. A thermal Pi camera. Yes. They are very, very cool. Uh, the, I think these sensors are 32 by 24 pixels and they're 16 bit. That is correct. Yes. It is 16 bit. It is 16 bit, yeah. yeah. So you're reading, well, in fact, the whole sensor is 16 bit. Everything you say to it or grab from it is in 16 bit. It's in 16 bit. And you're interpolating the image, aren't you, to a higher it's resolution? Two different, well, at the moment it's that just. That wasn't, that was the pixel. That was the plane upscale. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just doing pixel multiplying there. 
uh, which is fairly have you clear. Got, uh, demo you have a demo version? And it's uh, not on I can run because I edited it to get that working. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, basically, obviously, 32 by 24 is, is not a huge number of pixels. It's quite blocky. But by using, I guess you're using like bilinear, uh, by, uh, by cubic, yeah. by cubic, by cubic filtering, filtering, you can kind of stretch it out to make a, a slightly okay. more interesting image using the limited amount of pixel data you've got. How many it, more pixels is that? Is that it's it's as many as you want. Yeah, but how many did you have it set to scale? Up? I had it only double, double so okay. to make it, what is it, 48 by 62. Yes. It's all Very right. good for making a heat seeking right. robot. Like chase your <laughs> yeah. cat around the house or something. That would be awesome. Yeah. Cat seeking um, robot. Yeah, they're cool sensors. There's quite a few of these sensors out there already that are much lower resolution, kind of like uh, 8x8s and even like 8x1s and things, I think. Um, but these are quite a new part. And yeah, 32 by 24, that's, that's really good. They rely the very heavily on interpolation to get pictures out of them, don't they? I think this freeze pop is melted. So I think yeah, things sort of, like, sort of like uses for it would be things like, um, you know, if you had something like a PCB or a motherboard or something like that to look at kind of like the the heat distribution across the board and the mm -hmm. kind of heat dissipation, um, kind of like thermal efficiency of things. Um, and chasing your cat around the house. Yeah, like I, I guess kind of identifying like um, points where heat was escaping from rooms or houses mm -hmm. or <laughs> things like that. Maybe <laughs> setting it up to a closed that. door and look where um, escaping. Like right. John was saying, kind of presence detection type things, so you mm -hmm. could kind of, you know, set it up with a cup get, of tea tracking. I guess something like OpenCV to kind of identify warm bodies coming into rooms and things like that. Um, you can do a kind of night vision type thing um, with it as well. Um, yeah, you effectively cool false sensors. color it in like a green so it looks like night vision is quite cool. Yeah. Obviously it's thermal vision. So if you do actually get real night vision and the camera and one of these, then you can kind of cycle between them. Well you three. can do what we did in the yourself a predator kind of element. Overlay the imagery together to make mm. kind of a multi-sensory <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? That is cool. I kinda of love that. Apart from the, uh, the parallax problems you pointed out earlier. Well, yeah. if the two cameras were configured to have roughly the same field of view and were in the same position, you wouldn't have that problem. I have a cold yeah. fire arising from my head. I guess the focal length probably matters as well, so you might have to have them at different kind of flight distances, maybe. You might do. I'd yeah. imagine these would be set up similarly to the Raspberry Pi camera, which is kind of yeah, the focal have... length, basically, isn't it? 30 centimetres to infinity or something. I wonder how focal length yeah. Effectively, it's like a compromise that's, that's, where it works on most stuff. With that's focusing sort of distance thing. rather than focal length. Right. Oh, okay. um, so the focal length of the lens um, will be very, very short for small cameras like this. Ah, just because um, of physical limitation. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. I did like that. That's a cool shot. Handful of pixels. Mm -hmm. Far too entertaining. <laughs> really I love the hot, hot cup of tea is down here. It's just yes. hot. Love. So we did a fun little gif for the um, for the product page. Um, is that on the device? Yeah, it's oh. on the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> what did we break, Bill? <laughs> I don't know. I closed that. So this is making a cup of tea um, with the thermal camera. It's amazing. I might try and fix the device before we go on because it's just going to be a bit silly otherwise, isn't it? Um, Hi, this is a one. Here we go. Pure thermal. Yeah. You might need to just right click and reset transform. Now go. So you might notice that um, this this new breakout is the same the same shape as the newly redesigned BME six eighty. Um, so we've kind of moved to like a, a standard breakout format um, recently, not for any particular reason. <laughs> Yeah, that might be a lie. <coughs> I have a suspicion that making the pie output that particular resolution has caused the capture card to go a bit woo, and uh, the resolution's all wrong on that. Oh, right, okay. So the here. sources are coming through. You might need to set up wrong. the settings on there and see what it says. On the surface. This is fun. Live debugging this is great. great. So we, we promised no more picture in picture files. This is not necessarily a picture in picture <laughs> file. Found it's whole just new a, ways to whole new ways to fail. Spectacular file. Yeah. Can you really it? Yeah, so that thermal camera is very cool. I think it is. So, oh, 1080. So it shouldn't be looking like that at all. Yeah. 
It's really bizarre. So as well as fills in... Oh, has it just fixed itself? Oh. oh. Yay. Yeah, okay. I have no idea what we we totally knew what we are doing there yeah. and fixed it. Yeah, Magic. But... So you've written some software in C for this, haven't you, Phil? I have, yes. Yeah. We've written um, software in C. And there's also a Spark fun Arduino example that we've not tried, but it, yeah, should, I th it should just work. I think they released a quick board based on this. Yep. Um, and yeah, they've got some Arduino libraries that work with anything kind of above an Uno because you need so, a fair bit of space for the frame buffer. They've actually written, I've taken the uh, manufacturer library, the mm -hmm. upstream library, and I have made it work on the Raspberry Pi by adding in a shim to do the communication of I2C on the Pi, and then I've added a bunch of examples because what they were sorely missing was any example code to do anything with it. So then you see separate set of examples that involve just a basic test doing some bicubic interpolation, showing stuff on a frame buffer, uh, and video, which is a cool one, the one we used to capture the mug and the tea pouring in, which uh, allows you to capture any length of time to uh, an animated ping, and then you can take that and you can convert it to a GIF, or you can convert it to a, a full video, or whatever you want to, really. Oh, so, which is kind of cool. It gives you a thermal video camera, in a sense. So I was trying to fix the video thing, but did you, cam, did cam you talk through the uh, video on the product page? Yes. Yeah, we did briefly, oh, okay. yeah. while, while it was slightly distorted, but here. Hey. So you can see the kettle pouring in the white hot water and then the kind of heat permeating through the mug from the top of the mug. And those flashes at the top of Sandy what? adding his standard 13 cubes of sugar. <laughs> that was me dunking the tea bag. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah, was yeah. It on a string? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What interpolation yeah. did he do to, to that to get it to work like that? That's quite interesting. That's mm. just the GIF. The that's, GIF that's the GIF that's messed up like that. Really? <laughs> so this is just the browser scaling effectively or whatever it's doing. Well, the, the, the noise around the edges is, cool. is the GIF dithering effectively. Yeah. And then obviously yeah. the browser scaling it. Yeah. Well, it looks like there's some... Uh, like pixel interpolation, some upscaling there. Cause it's obviously yeah, I've, I've upscaled it as well, yeah. Yeah, I've, yeah. Done, I've done lots of stuff to that. Yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah, so this cool. is a, a prime example of what you can do with the, the camera footage, and as we've demonstrated, uh, surprisingly successfully live on air, you could take video of this happening with a real camera, video of this happening with a thermal camera, superimpose the two onto each other, and do some kind of cool effect shot where you're seeing both the visible and the thermal spectrums and... Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So these colours map directly to actual temperatures as well. That's that's right, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. We should. Uh, do we have an example where it does like a temperature <coughs> scale down the side, <coughs> like on the handheld? We don't yet. Oh, we, we should. We'll add an example. Yeah, we'll add some full graphic uh, UI for that, so you can start up your Raspbian desktop and you can actually view the camera and put the cursor where you want to know what the temperature is. And, things like that, because that's possible, it'd be pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, Should we, can we show the um, the way the camera fits into the breakout on the close-up? Because with... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, can do, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that's quite neat, isn't uh, it? I'm going to break this again. Hey. Um, yeah, so... Simple. You can see the pins kind of sticking out the back, but... Um, it is socketed. Yeah, so it's little but, sockets. But we don't recommend that you take it out and put it back in again because the sensors are really expensive. Yeah. 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 We're actually trimming the um, leads down on the back of those so they wouldn't normally come with that much. <laughs> but, That's a lot of lead. Yeah, basically we've, we've gone with those sockets because the sensors are very expensive and we didn't want to risk them in the soldering process. So yeah. we've got uh, surface mount sockets on there instead. Which and I guess if you were on the board, you would have to discard the camera as well. Yeah. Exactly. These yeah. cameras you so can actually just whip off the breakout and run entirely on their own with a few, uh, a few bits in of a bit breadboard or something. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. uh, the breakout just makes them uh, kind of much easier to wire onto. Yeah. <laughs> much less likely to be damaged, of course. And they are online now and available to buy. Uh, they're, not, they're not cheap, but at uh, £54, I think they're not bad. And we've, only got, we've only got a limited number initially, haven't we? At the moment, we've only got a few. We're just Handful, test, testing them yeah. out, and then yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We've already made up for the price by being. <laughs> I've put so much effort into the software to make it actually usable. But yes. I'd say it's still somewhat advanced, but I don't want to get this down to the point where anyone can just plug it on and start a little bit of desktop software to play with the thermal imaging. Which would be yeah, cool. definitely. If anyone else wants to contribute to that, <coughs> there you go. And the next uh, big reveal today is two new versions of Inkypad, where we have a yellow stroke goldy kind of colour, and we've also got a standard black white. 
The yellow gold one works exactly the same way as the red inky pads, so it's three inks. Uh, it, it uses that kind of pulsing update process. The black and white inky fat is, I believe, cheaper, but is much faster to update. It works on the same uh, principle. Yeah, I can't remember. So the only reason it's much faster to update is you don't have to worry about separating the inks out. You yeah, to yeah. Clear it in quite the same way. It basically, you just need to clamp the black and the white. Although white presently, it's, it's just quicker. using the uh, red color pattern. So mm -hmm. I'm going to write some official super fast black ones at some point. But what you can do is you can also get the grayscale one level of grayscale on the black and white. I that, am nice. relatively sure that with a lot of time and effort and insanity, that could do quite impressive grayscale. We'll work on that. Yeah. I think it will be uh, fun to tinker with at some point, but I, I, I spent rather a lot of time getting the yellow, so just so. the black yeah. was slightly neglected. So they're also Ooh. available on the store, yeah. and so the tracing is the same for all three variants. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know how they've been uh, um, set up. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. and Phil's done a bit of tweaking of the library as well. To kind of yeah, these are actually displays from a new vendor, so we had to change the library to accommodate that, but it will ask you what version of Inkyfat you've got and drive it in the right way, basically. So you, basically you have to say you've got a yellow or one. red or a black yeah. one before it will let you start updating it. Uh, if you drive, there's no damage if you drive the yellow one with the red code or the red one with the yellow code. They just look awful. They need, yeah, they have like uh, lookup tables of voltages, don't they? That are specifically tuned to that pigment, that color pigment. Yeah, uh, so, so you need to use the right set of lookup tables for the right kind of display. And the black and white, I think you'd be, it could update in like a second or something. Yeah, it's much, much second, faster. Yeah. And so yeah. that's great for stuff where you need a, a faster update. Yep. And you're not too worried about having color in there. Actually, if you don't care about a bit of ghosting, you can get it to update, you know, in kind of fractions of a, of a second. You basically mm -hmm. don't clear the original image, yeah, yeah. very good. So if, you, if you don't totally clear it, if you just kind of, you know, clear it enough for it to be kind of okay, then you can actually get it to update. You have know, to make a black turbo mode for this. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do some demos turbo. for that, I think. Because yeah. it changes what you can do with it. The, the coloured ones, because of the slower update, are only really suitable for certain types of tasks. The black and white one, you can do a lot more. You can do kind of like very low frame rate animation on it. <laughs> and there's, a, there's a good YouTube video of a guy that's kind of hacking uh, e-paper displays to kind of um, get like really, really quick updates. So he does things like animate like a little ball bouncing across the display and stuff like that. I think I've seen that. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Today on Applied Science, Ooh. I'm going to talk about... You've got a YouTube and a YouTube, so yeah. Cal is on applied science with an idea of exactly what these displays can do. Yeah, I'm trying to track to a bit where it's actually being shown. There's a lot of explanation for how he tapped into the. Uh, it's, a, it's a good way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's tapped very into the, the lines on the e paper display so we could see exactly how it was working. And then basically just reverse engineered it. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's the actual updating. It's probably in the third video of the series, <laughs> or something. Like. Always the case. Bam. Yep. So again, we've got a small number of the black and white ones. I think mm -hmm. there's um, there's not many. Fourteen, I think, available. Something like that. Um, the yellow one, there's there's quite a few more, um, and we're kind of pretty low on the red one because it's like one of our most popular products. Yeah, we're just waiting um, so, on the shipment yeah. of more panels at the moment. So. They'll, be, they'll be back soon enough. Yep. Won't take that long. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Do we have any other new and shiny? We do not. Not today. We've got um, we've got one of the new Power Over Ethernet hats for... Oh, we have. Yeah. Pi, Pi, uh, so I think we're going to probably, probably do a event. special yeah. build track about that. Yeah, um, and we got, I think we've got some consumer grade power over ethernet compatible network equipment as well. So we'll have a play with it, we'll power it up, we'll see yeah. if it all blows up in smoke and yeah, yeah why not? Uh, I think we've also just added a new low temp solder paste to the store, which is super handy for um, Easy fixing problem, mistakes right? in surface mount assembly basically. So if you do a fair bit of surface mount assembly at home, you know, skillet style or in a, in a toaster <laughs> oven or whatever, Whenever you make a mistake and you end up with a bridge on there and it's kind of difficult to rework it, a little bit of a low temp paste goes a long way. You can just uh, mix it in with the solder that's already on the board and it really helps you deal with the problem without having to put too much heat on there. I wish I'd had this stuff when I was making my, uh, what was it, retro to N64 cartridge adapter. Yes. 
soldered one thing on and then couldn't get to the soldering points of the other thing and it just all went horribly wrong and I bought this silver glue conductive glue stuff and tried to put like that on there. silver or something yeah like conductive paste yeah it's conductive new. like sticky wow. paste silver it's very expensive in a little tube like that and it did not work it did not work it just all went wrong from <laughs> very cool and I, I think, think that is all we have for you today because we're all exhausted. We're still moving buildings, so it's, it's a bit so chaotic. Warm. Hopefully the sound is better. It sounds oh, yeah. better to me no, here. Yeah. Well, we'll have yeah, no, immediate feedback, it's way less reverberatory. Yeah. Uh, there's also a camera directly in front of the microphone, which probably doesn't help things right now. But yeah. we've, we've gone to extreme lengths to... Uh, Not really. Creative. Creative, yeah, creative, yeah, creative yeah. lengths, that's all. So, yeah. uh, but we'll, we'll keep working on it. And uh, I think we've got something particularly exciting to show next week. So make sure you tune in next week. Couldn't possibly come. I don't even know what that is. You know what that is. Do you? Yeah. Which, which, which yeah, one is yeah. it? There's a few. Are, are you hinting that we have yeah. many exciting things coming them. out? It's both of them coming next week. Mm. Uh, so we will see you next week. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Mm.